Other than military bridging for gap crossing, combat engineers use heavy machinery to move obstacles out of the way so that army manoeuvre forces and support arms can move easily around the battlefield. Traditional workhorses of the combat engineers, namely earth-moving equipment, have undergone changes in type and capability. This high-mobility plant, or HMP, is a powerful 12-ton, multi-purpose armoured plant that combat engineers use for a variety of operations. A Swiss Army knife of heavy plants, the HMP is capable of doing multiple tasks with a series of different attachments. This includes a two-ton hoe, a dozer bucket, a forklift attachment, a breaker, a compactor and an earth auger. Where combat engineers used to have to dig for hours, the HMP, with its variety of attachments, helped move huge amounts of earth, break through concrete and smooth roads. Soldiers, therefore, save energy so that they can push further on. For soldiers, they have to dig their fire trench, command posts, everything. They are going to dig and dig and dig. It's going to take days and days. With technology like this, you could do work faster. So it saves their energy and when they go on for their next, uh, next mission or for their, for their next activity, they are much more able to give up whatever they have for their mission. While the combat engineers have the equipment and technology to ensure the smooth movement of troops and platforms across the battlefield, there is the other side of the coin. Using the same assets and know-how, they can also stop troops and platforms in their tracks. Heavy earth-moving machines can dig long trenches or ditches to slow down the enemy. Important routes can be piled with earth or laid with precast obstacles, like concrete cubes to hinder movement. Using their know-how of demolition and explosives, they can also rig up an ambush to stop enemy convoys using various explosive charges. Ignited! While explosive charges are effective in springing surprises, the future battlefield will still see the use of conventional mines to limit the movement of opposing forces to physical and psychological damage. So an important role of the combat engineers is to help friendly forces move quickly and safely to a minefield. They have to ensure that the soldier's next step won't be his last. The conventional way of clearing a minefield is a slow and laborious process. A mine prodder is first used to detect any buried mines, and a mine claw is used to dislodge the mines and to set off any booby traps. The dislodged mines are then disposed of in a separate location. It takes more than four hours for a platoon of combat engineers to manually clear a 100-meter path. Not to mention the risks that come with this operation. There are now faster and easier ways. Ignited! Using the projection line charge, for example, combat engineers can clear infantry lanes through a minefield in a fraction of the time. There is also the Trailblazer countermine vehicle, which clears a minefield using a series of chains and striker heads attached to a rotating shaft. Third Sergeant Loga, who operates the Trailblazer, showed me the business end of this green goliath. Okay, yeah, sure. Thanks. Yeah. So this is basically our flail system. Mm -hmm. So uh, our flail system has 72 chains and on that we have the striker head. The striker head is what basically hits the ground and is the point of impact. 
looking like some medieval torture instrument, these striker hits can dish out some heavy-duty punishment to the buried mines in the way of the trailblazer. Whirling and twirling at 1,200 revolutions per minute, the chains and striker hits pound the ground to clear a 100-metre path in less than eight minutes. It strikes the ground at uh, 1.7 tonnes force. Uh, this force is very extreme for uh, landmines which are basically uh, made of plastic and explosives themselves. So um, when, when it strikes the ground, uh, the mines usually just break, causing the mechanism not to detonate. If we displace the mines, it will be out of our zone which is supposed to be cleared, so it's good for us as well. Yeah. Buried mines can also detonate during the clearing process. If that happens, the trailblazer is protected from shrapnel by a blast shield behind the rotating shaft. The two-man crew sits snug and safe in the shockproof armoured cabin. Metal spikes are also fired into the ground as the vehicle moves along. The spikes mark out the lanes that the trailblazer has cleared. Friendly troops and platforms can then trail quickly and safely behind without losing momentum. It looks rather slow during mine clearing, but a trailblazer is actually quite nimble on its feet. Weighing in at less than 30 tonnes, it uses a single engine to power both the vehicle and the mine clearing system. There's a suspension system which uh, allow the vehicle to go through tough terrain. It's similar to driving an automatic car. Yeah, it's really easy to operate. The Trailblazer is really uh, light and compact so that we can travel at a fast speed and to keep pace with the armour forces to facilitate uh, mine clearing operation. Next week, catch how the combat engineers stay cool as they fight an invisible enemy. If you release the mask, that breath may be the very last breath you take. <laughs>